Tigers down there in Wollongong. Took the Dragons to their seventh win of the season, and it really was a destructive second half by the Red V. They trailed 14-12 at halftime and then uh, exploded for 44 and answered points in the second half after only a few weeks prior having uh, almost the, 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 the same done to them when they conceded 38 unanswered points uh, against a very good Kennery Bankstown side a few weeks earlier. So a fine performance by the Dragons, Kurt. Um, it was just devastating. The Tigers just couldn't keep up with them in the second half. And, and I don't know about about you or about other fans, but I certainly didn't see this coming, not in the magnitude. I, I think I felt confident the Dragons would be able to get the win and maybe grind to an 8 or 10 or 12 point victory, but I didn't think they were going to explode the, the way they did. Um, but yeah, it was it really was a tremendous uh, second half performance, whether or whether or not you, 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 you thought the, the Tigers played well on Friday night. Um. Yeah. I, look, from from a West Tigers perspective, anyway, I I think I even tweeted out when West Tigers were were up early and, and looking pretty good. I think I posted how how can West Tigers stuff this up? Uh, they even exceeded my worst or best expectations of of how they could do that. Um. But then again, it. it I, I hate when when commentators or or coaches from losing sides say we didn't have enough ball. Um, um, we didn't have enough possession. The reason you don't have enough ball or possession or you're missing tackles or you're more fatigued is because you are leaking points. You're not tackling. You're the worst team. So if the other team is dominating you, then by every right of, of the game, it, it should they should be dominating everything. So mm. um, the Dragons put the, the West Tigers to the sword. And, and like I said last week, a good team should have beaten that understrength Panther side. Uh, whether it's the Dragons or not, that like, it, like any team of any type of quality should have looked at that Penrith side with all due respect because that is the Penrith system. Uh, a poor team, like a, a really bad team like West Tigers, would have probably found a way to to drop that. But uh, a good side beats the Panthers last week. A good side flogs what West Tigers dished up um, at, at Wollongong. It, it was hard to watch for West Tigers fans, but also very very happy for the Dragons because. They didn't take the foot off the the neck, they the, the throat. They they wanted to keep going, and and they did. They they almost looked like they enjoyed it, which mm. which is you know good for the for for dragons fans. I love the game plan um, surrounding the the dragons, and it's something we've we've seen used a, a little bit this season. That power game, Moses Suli, Rain Fatala Mariner, Jaden Sewer, who we didn't see an awful lot of, obviously because of of, of having played in Origin uh, midweek. Luciano Le Lua, they they really just kind of ran rough shot over, over the top of of the West Tigers, especially when you think about that Moses Suli bust that led to Zach Lomax backing up nicely to to score back on on the inside. And I think even you can probably throw Rain. Raymond Fatala Mariner and Frankie Molo into that discussion. The Dragons are not known for having a damaging forward pack. They're not known as uh, as a side that has really great middle forwards. But I think when you look on the the edge, and that includes Suli, and you throw in Leilua and, and Sura and some of the other kind of depth pieces there and, and bench players, it's maybe something that Shane Flanagan is is going to continue to to kind of roll with. And it's not always going to fall the way that it did on Friday night against the against the Tigers, who just seemed kind of overwhelmed and incapable of, of, of stopping that, that onslaught. But uh, I, I think for, for fans listening, Kurt, they've got to be pretty excited about some of the displays they've seen from some of their edge players um, that, are, that are kind of firming as, as some, of the, some of the better players in, in that position in, in the league. Well, there's a lot of, of good edge back rowers in the competition, but gee, I, I know you've seen a fair bit of Luciano Le Lua and Jaden Sewer this year, obviously through, through the podcast, but gee, when they're on, they, they're probably two of the most damaging back rowers on, on the competition and can score points and score tries close to the line, not just damaging coming out of their own end and, and making metres, just close to the line. They are, they're they a real attacking threat and an attacking weapon for, for the Dragons and for, for Kyle Flanagan and Ben Hunt. Yeah, and look, as my dad's you know said forever, he, he's, all football games are won through the pigs, the, the big boys, the engine room. <laughs> Um, and I think almost now I, I look at Suli. I'm going to do a double take at least twice every game I watch him. Yeah. And go, is that really Moses Suli? Yeah, he looks incredible. He's been fantastic this year, hasn't he, Kurt? Oh, and look, not just that, but the, his physical stature and how hard he's worked in the gym. He looks amazing. Um, and I think now too, Leilua, and I know it's you know different sides of the field, but Leilua and 
for Talamarina are, are building this kind of – even though they, they, they probably don't link up because edge forwards don't do that anymore, but they're almost kind of challenging each other and getting better. And the players individually are starting to do things that they weren't doing last year or the start of this year as well. Um, the Dragons had to always play the power game through the middle. And it, it's funny, when we did the preview for the, the, the first game between these two at Campbelltown earlier in the season, I was like, okay, so I think the Dragons might struggle a little bit because they're gonna, the, the West Tigers pack because that's how the West Tigers were playing. The Dragons just said, oh, don't worry about that. We're, we're going to play our game and match them and beat them and then did everything else to win that match. That I, I think the players, generally speaking, particularly the forwards, are now understanding their roles and really owning what they're doing. They're, and, and, you know, I'm scared to say this, but I think there's a bit of pride in what they're doing. They, they mm. are working hard. They are getting into good positions and, and dare I say it, enjoying the contest. They're, they're enjoying, you know, that, that those small battles and those small spot fires across the field that get you down the field, every single tackle, every single tackle is a battle and they're winning them and they're taking advantage of that and, and, and scoring tries, and, and they look good doing it, which is amazing. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Moses Sully, um, and, and not to try and toot my own horn, but when we kind of made our predictions early in the season, I, I said I, th- I thought he would be um, one of the most damaging players for, for the Dragons and, and, and would, would be what, arguably their best player. And I think you look at you look at his stats and he's, he's averaging 138 metres a game. He's scored a couple of tries. He's got three try assists. Um, averaging almost four tackle breaks a game. Like, uh, he's, a, he's someone that can quite literally break the game open. And, and there was nothing there was nothing going on um, for that run that he took in the first half. He just simply wanted it more and showed physicality. And I think, yeah, a, a lot of these Dragons... Let's put it this way. The Dragons are not a silky, quick, um, fleet-footed um, team that is, yeah... Like the Roosters, it's going to like drift across field and, and burn sides with pace. Like the Dragons are, a, they're just going to like they're not going to knock at the door. They're going to barge the door down. I think you've you've got some real physical presence there, especially when Hame Sele comes back. Um, I think Toby Couchman's added some punch off the bench as well. I think they're just a real physical side, and and I would love to kind of see that game plan that that. And I I know it's not an easy game plan to to always play with because. Yeah, these guys are human beings at the end of the day and you get injuries and you get sore and it, it, it can take a toll when you play that physical style. But I think when you've got Leilua, Fatala Mariner, Sua, mm. Suli, even mm. Lomax, like it doesn't get spoken about, but Zach Lomax is one of the most physical players in that dragon side. He loves the contact. He loves to get busy. He loves to do the dirty work in and around the ruck and get his hands on the on the football. Um, it's I think that's promising. Frankie Molo as well. Um he, he loves to just try and punch a hole through the middle to Bellin. Like, yeah, it's not always going to work. You're not going to, you're obviously not going to have the success every week like you had against the Tigers last week. But I think one of the things that Flanagan kind of preached in the off season, Kurt was, oh, when, when teams play, play us, they're going to know they've played in a game. Well, you can, a perfect example of that is by, by running this physical style of football. And yeah, team might beat you by 12, 14, 16 or 18 points, but they're going to be feeling it um, the, the the next day. So I, I'm really kind of interested to see if this is something that, that continues and, and trying to isolate some of those defenders on an edge against guys like Sua and Leilua, where if you you miss the tackle, you're probably going to concede a try, Kurt. Yeah, and look, going back to Suli as well, I, I know he's not eligible for New South Wales, but tell me how many how many centres in the game are playing as good as Suli right now. Mm. And, and, and forget reputation and what other centres have done in, in red football. If he was eligible, I mean, it, it might be a little bit far off, but I mean, the big Lomax. So you tell me how many are playing. This is the most consistent Suli's played in a long time. And, and um, yeah, you, you we, we've spoken about this at, at nauseum with the Dragons. They've got to play. They've got to just be you know pushing through and playing that power game. And, they're just out contesting a lot of sides um, that that might have a bit more reputation about them. Um, some, and I say bigger clubs. I, I mean bigger clubs right now, like Parramatta. And but that doesn't mean the Dragons can't be as big as Parramatta again in a couple of years. It's just the the you know the, the, the perception mm. of the club. But it, it's if they keep playing like this, like they are. Like I said, like I said, if you know, if they play consistently or, or to the best of their abilities, that they're going to drop some games. But they're they're looking 
very close. It, 